Okay, so welcome to this next video in the Theory of Probability playlist. In this video, what we're going to do uh, is introduce the concept of order statistics. And order statistics is really um, about, <clears throat> it's about sampling. So the idea basically is that you have uh, some, um, something which you are sampling. Uh, so uh, in our example to um, to give a concrete example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the example of the interval 0 to 1. So basically, we are sampling points on the interval 0 to 1. Uh, so um, and what, remember what a sample means. So if we sample the human population, if we go to the 7 billion people of the human population and we take a sample of 100 people, what that means is you randomly select 100 people from the human population and collect some data about them. So for instance, uh, you take their height or something. Okay, uh, so there's some some probability distribution that you'll get uh, each of the values between 0 and 1, and we're going to assume that that's uniformly distributed. So we're going to assume that it, you're equally likely to pick any point on the interval 0 to 1. Now what we want to consider is we want to consider a probability space, which is the probability space consisting of every possible sample that you could get, uh, that you could possibly get. Uh, so... There are absolutely loads of possible samples you could get. Uh, firstly, I need to tell you what the sample size is. So let's say I'm taking big N points, okay? Uh, so um, if you want to, to make it concrete, you can make big N4, if you like. Uh, so uh, you take big N points, you sample big N points from this interval 0 to 1. So an example of a, uh, of a possible sample that you could have come up with is you could have got the point 0, you could have po got the point 0 0.5, you could have got the point 1, and you could have got the point 0 0.75. So there are, are absolute, that's for an example when big N is equal to 4. More generally, obviously, you'll need to take big N sample points. So we've only at the moment got Four here, but more generally you'll need big N. And there are absolutely loads of possible samples that you could come up with, basically, uh, that you could have selected. And remember, it's completely random how you've selected this, uh, this these samples. So this is the probability space of all possible samples that you could have come up, that you could get when you actually do this experiment, when you sample it. So uh, going back to the example of the human population, when you pick 100 people, there are absolutely loads of possible samples that you can get in that case, aren't there? Um, okay, uh, so um, in this case, obviously, uh, we are sampling points on the interval 0 to 1, so there's uncountably infinitely many, whereas obviously humans on the world, there's a finite number which simplifies the process somewhat, but um, the principle is the same, basically. Now, we could think about creating random variables on this uh, probability space. We could think about creating the random variable x1, which is going to map you onto the interval uh, 0 to 1. And the way it's going to work is it's just going to map any sample, basically. So any sample in this probability space here. So this is the probability space of all possible samples, basically. And it's going to take any sample and it's going to map it onto the value of the first sample point. So basically, if I get my highlighters, uh, it is going to look at a sample like this one here. And it's going to say, OK, what's your first sample point in you? So in this case, it's 0. So x1 is going to ascribe that sample. It's going to ascribe Describe that sample, the value zero, basically. Uh, so to any sample, it will go in, look at what the first sample point that you chose. So we're going to imagine that samples are stored in the order that you sampled as well. So this was the first point I sampled, this was the second point I sampled, this was the third point I sampled, etc. And basically, it will look at the first point you sampled, and it will ascribe you the value of that first sample point, basically. And this is certainly a valid uh, random variable, because it's going to be defined on every possible sample. And we can ask, you know, what's the probability uh, that you'll get a certain value? What's the probability density function of this random variable? Well, you are equally likely, you are uniformly likely to have picked your first point in the sample to be any point on the interval 0, 1. Therefore, this random variable x1 must be uniformly distributed on the interval 0, 1. Okay, and that's just because you are uniformly likely to have picked any of them just by assumption. Our initial, uh, our initial assumption was that, you know, when you were picking these points, you picked them at random, and you were uniformly likely to have picked any of the points in that interval 0 to 1. Okay, uh, so uh, what we can then imagine doing is... Um, 
generalizing this, so what's so special about the first sample point? We might as well define a random variable for the second sample point. Uh, so we could create a random variable uh, which is going to ascribe uh, to every sample, it's going to ascribe it uh, the uh, value of the second sample point. So in this case, it will ascribe it 0 0.5. So x1 was orange random variable. Uh, x2 is going to be the green random variable. So it will ascribe to every sample. It will look at what the second sample point was, and it will just ascribe uh, to each sample the value of that second sample point. And again, we can ask, how is this random variable going to be distributed? And again, the answer is the same. You were uniformly likely to have selected any point on the interval 0 to 1 as your second sample point. And this is one of the reasons why order statistics is so nicely done when uh, the uh, probability distribution that you will select a certain point in your sample is continuous, as it is in this case. It's a continuous probability distribution, that, because uh, you've got an uncountably infinitely many points. And the reason that is nice is that we have selected zero uh, in this for, for our first sample point, but basically that does not affect the probability distribution for the second sample point, because, you know, the probability that I actually get zero again is going to be zero. So, um, so basically the fact that I've already removed one of these, and I don't obviously want to sample the same point again, it means that the probability that you get uh, 0 0.5, basically, has not changed because you've already selected 0. Whereas if you've got a discrete probability space, it does change. Imagine for a moment that the Earth only contains a 1,000 people, and you are sampling 100 people. Well, as you sample more and more people, so as you pull out the first person, as you pull out the second person, obviously the probability distribution that the third person or the fourth person or whatever has a certain value is changing because you are actually pulling people out. So the, because of that, you're removing, you know, people, you are removing, you are moving points that were contributing to the probability distribution uh, of, uh, let's say, height in that uh, population, basically. So say uh, you had some three meter tall person, um, and they were, you know, a giant, and they were pulling everything up, well, uh, uh, you know, pulling up the average height, maybe. Once you've sampled them, the probability of them getting a tall person is going up, of, well, the, you know, the probability of getting a three meter person was, uh, was something non-zero before you sampled the first person. But once you've removed that three meter person, say you got him as your first person, obviously then if there's no one else of three meter height, then the probability of getting another person with three meters tall is going to go to zero. So basically, in the case of discrete probability spaces like this, where the sample, uh, the sampling population you're looking at is a discrete probability space, basically, rather than a continuous one in this case, um, then uh, it, it, that order statistics becomes much more complicated because when you sample your sample, your higher samples, your earlier samples are going to affect uh, the probability of getting a certain value in your later sample, basically, because you've removed them from the pot that you are sampling, effectively. Okay, so x2 is also going to be uniformly distributed on 0, 1, but basically, if we have a continuous probability space, we circumvent all of that, because this, the, that, you're picking out a finite number, it doesn't matter, basically, because this is uncountably infinite. It does not matter. It's not going to affect probabilities. Uh, so that's what's nice. These All these random variables remain uniformly distributed, 0, 1. Okay, and we obviously could define more. You could go on all the way up to x big n. So you could go on down here, and x big n is going to ascribe uh, each sample values between 0 and 1. And the way it's going to work is it's just going to look at the nth point, nth sample point that you chose, and it's going to ascribe be the value uh, that that nth sample point uh, sampled, basically. Okay, and again, xn is going to be uh, uniformly distributed on 0, 1. And in fact, all of the uh, random variables in between that, so x3, which will ascribe you the value of your third uh, sample point, x4, which will ascribe you the value of the fourth sample point, all the way through to xn, they are all going to be uniformly distributed on 0, 1, because the probability that you pick any point on that interval 0 to 1 is still uniformly distributed. Basically, the fact that you've already picked certain points does not affect it, and that is what is beautiful about order statistics with a continuous random variable, and what makes doing it with discrete Sorry, with discrete uh, probability, uh, probability um, distributions on which you're sampling, harder is that uh, you have to 
factor in this information that the probability distribution of these random variables here, x1 through xn, is going to change, basically. OK, now these are not order statistics. These random variables, x1 through x big N, these are not order statistics. So now let me tell you what order statistics are. Order statistics are a different type of random variable. So I will now define the first order statistics. Firstly, order statistics are random variables uh, on, uh, on your probability space of all possible samples that you could have come up with from this uh, probability space over here. And the first order statistic, which is written x and then parentheses in the subscript 1, like so, is basically again going to ascribe every sample values between 0 and 1. And what it's going to do is it's going to look at each sample. It's going to go through each sample like this. So it'll go through, look at every single sample point that you have sampled in this great sample. <laughs> and uh, it will look for which one is the smallest, basically. So you can imagine basically going through and asking which one's the smallest. And in this case, it is zero. So one will be the smallest. You have a finite set here. So the smallest is defined, basically. And x1 is going to ascribe every sample in that space of all possible samples that you could have taken. It's going to ascribe it the value of the smallest um, sample point. So x parentheses 1, the first order statistic, is going to take a sample, uh, which is an outcome here, and it's going to map it onto the value of the minimum of uh, all the points in that sample, so all the sample points. So all sample points here in S. I'll put Okay, so that's what um, this random variable is going to be defined to be, and that's the first order statistic. Okay, now you can go on. Uh, you can define uh, the second order statistic, so we'll do that now. So the second order statistic, x parentheses 2, like this, is again going to map you onto values between 0 to 1, and what it's going to do what it's going to do is it's going to look at a sample and it will go through all the points and it will look for the second smallest one. So basically, if you imagine taking any sample and rearranging the uh, sample points, the points that you've sampled, such that they are in linearly increasing order. So in this case, all we'd have to do is uh, rearrange it to 0, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 1. So we'd only have to swap these two to make that in order. And basically, the first order statistic is going to, sam is going to map you onto the value of the first one in this, uh, in this uh, sample, which is now in order. And the second order statistic is going to map you onto the second one now that they are in order. And we continue on in this fashion. The x3 one is going to map you onto the third smallest one. x4, x parentheses 4, the fourth order statistic, is going to map you onto the fourth smallest one. And then you go on all the way up to the nth, the big nth, small, uh, big nth uh, order statistic, which is going to map you onto values between 0 and 1, as so as such, and basically it's going to map you onto the big nth smallest one, but the big nth smallest one is the one that was actually the greatest, so it's going to map you onto the maximum of all of these. So basically x1 in this case would be 0, x2 would be 0 0.5, and x big m, which would be 4 in this case, uh, the fourth order statistic would be 1. Okay, and obviously there's all the ones in between as well. So, the first order statistic and the last order statistic often have other names, uh, which are very simple. The first order statistic is often called the minimum of a sample, so it describes to each sample the minimum, uh, and the nth, small, the nth uh, order statistic is often called the maximum. Uh, you can also define... Um, if if your if the size of your sample is convenient, so let me uh, let me show you. Um, if your size of your sample, let's say, is seven, seven's the prime one, then uh, there are basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points in your sample, basically. And in this case, what you can do is you can uh, the fourth order statistic in this case is going to be the median. I in any sample, what it will do is it will put all the points in order and it will find you which one is the fourth biggest. Now the fourth biggest is as far as the order is concerned, it's the one that's in the middle. So basically you can also define the concept of a median. So if your sample size is basically odd, then you can define the concept of a median. All you need to do is add 1 to the size, so take 7, add 1, and then divide that by 2, so you'll get 8. When you divide that by 2, you'll get 4. 
So x uh, n plus 1 divided by 2, if n is odd, is what's known as the median. And in 7's case, you can even define things called uh, the upper quartile and the lower quartile. Uh, so the upper quartile is the one that's effectively 75% of the way along. So uh, what x uh, parentheses 0.75n, and then what you'd have to do, obviously 0.75n might not be a whole number. For instance, in the case of 7, if we take 0.75n, then we're taking 0.75 times 7. That's 3 quarters times 7, so we're going to get 21 over 4. 21 over 4, uh, 20 over 4 is 5, um, so this becomes uh, 5 uh, point, uh, five and a quarter. Okay, uh, so uh, basically that rounds down actually to 5. It's closer to 5, clearly, than it is to 6. So the upper quartile in this case, even though you'd think what it would be is uh, you'd think it would be um, you'd think it would be six rather than uh, four uh, rather than five, but in this case it actually is five. It's closer to being five than it is to being uh, six. Um, okay, so uh, this would be our upper quartile in that case. You'd round this down or up depending on which one it was closer to. So if it was within zero point five of five, then you would round it to five. If it was in zero point five of six, you'd round it to six, and that's called the upper quartile upper quartile, and um, and if you have x 0.25n, again rounded so that you know it makes a, a natural number, uh, that's known as the lower quartile. And obviously a very important thing in statistics is called the interquartile range, so uh, all that is is basically the upper quartile, x 0.75n minus x 0.25n, so it's the upper quartile minus the lower quartile, so the difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile. Now these are values, this interquartile range is the value that you can ascribe to any sample, because these order statistics of the upper quartile and the lower quartile are certainly things you can work out for any sample in this, sam in this probability space of all possible samples, and therefore uh, you can certainly take one of those order statistics and subtract it from another order statistic and create another random variable. So the interquartile range is basically a random variable on this sample, on this probability space of all possible samples that you can take of our original, um, of our original sample thing that we were sampling over here. Okay, and it's going to be very, very interesting for us to uh, try and work out how are these order statistics, how are these x1, x parentheses 1, x parentheses 2, all the way up to x parentheses n, how are these order statistics distributed? Uh, it's going to be very interesting for us to be able to work out the PDFs and the CDFs of these order statistics, and that's what we're going to move on to in the next video.